in this lecture we will be solving the hydrogen atom problem using suci technique okay. so basically suci technique consists of defining uh, two operators a given by w plus d by dx and a dagger into w minus d by dx then we form two partner hamiltonians h1 as a dagger a and h2 as a a dagger okay and uh, so typically h1 will come out to be so these are the basically two things that we want to do so this will come out to be minus d squared by dx squared plus w squared minus w dash and h2 will come out to be minus d squared by dx squared plus w squared plus w dash here w is called the super potential so if h2 and h1 are related with some constant which is not a function of you know, position or momentum operators then the suci uh, technique would easily give rise to the various eigenvalues and eigenvectors so this is the overall uh, idea now what we need to determine first is the super potential so but before doing that let us write down the radial time independent schrodinger equation for hydrogen atom problem so that will be given by minus h cross squared upon 2m d squared by dr squared then we have plus l into l plus 1 h cross squared by 2m r squared which is the centrifugal term you can say minus the coulomb term minus the square by r so that is your kinetic energy plus potential energy acting on let us say u e l of r equal to e times u e l of r so this is a radial time limit showing the equation and first thing that we will do is we will introduce two new parameters one parameter will introduce as y equal to k times r and we will introduce k square plus h cross square Mm, not k square. Let me introduce directly e. E equal to h cross square k square by 2m. Basically, k square also will be written as 2m by h cross whatever. So if we substitute this y equal to kr here, so what we will get is d square by dr square will become k square times d square by dy square, which you can easily show. So we'll get minus h cross square k square by 2m times d squared by dy square and here we have l into l plus 1 h cross square divided by 2m r is y squared by k square so y squared and by k square will go up minus uh, z e squared by r is again y by k so k goes up so this will be multiplying now let us say u l of y equal to e will be substituted as h cross squared k squared by 2m times u l of y so e we have taken out of the equation now if we take out h cross squared k squared by 2m common then it will get cancelled you can see here also this there so what we will get is minus d squared by dy squared plus l into l plus 1 by y squared and here we will get a constant which is z e squared now because you are taking h cross squared k squared with 2m common so we will get a 2m by h cross squared so there is a k on top there is a k squared down so we get a one single k and this whole thing multiplying 1 by y times ul of y equal to 1 times ul of y Right. So, this particular quantity here, I will give it a symbol 
kappa. So the Coulomb Hamiltonian, let's see, let me put an L to show that it is dependent on L minus d squared by dy squared plus L into L plus 1 upon y squared minus kappa by y. And the equation that we need to solve is HCL acting on UL of y equal to 1 times UL of y. This is the final equation. So now what we need to do is we have to formulate the operators A and A dagger such that our H1 can be written in terms of this HC. Okay, so we need to determine the super potential. So how to determine super potential? W of y. So let us write down h1. h1 should be basically minus d squared by dy squared minus square dy squared plus w squared of y minus w dash of y. Right? So this should be somehow looking similar to this. So this should be hc which is basically minus d squared by dy squared plus l into l plus 1 upon y squared minus kappa by y plus some constant c1. Okay. So how do I choose w of y? That is a question. So you can see that uh, we need a 1 by y squared. So obviously w of y should have some constant a1 by y. Then when you square it, you will get a1 squared by y squared. Okay, so y, 1 by y squared will come. But we also need a 1 by uh, y. So maybe we can add another constant b1. So that what happens when you square it, you will get a a1 squared by y squared plus 2a1 b1 by y, y plus some constant. Okay, but then uh, we will also add a minus sign which uh, is required for ensuring that we get a normalized wave function. If we take a plus sign, in the end we might not. Uh, we might get an 1 by L and L equal to 0 might give an infinity. So, to avoid that, which we can see separately on your own, to avoid that, we take a minus sign. So, now what is W squared of Y? So, W squared of Y will be equal to A1 squared by Y squared plus minus 2A1 B1 by Y plus B1 squared. Okay. So, So let us write down h1 again now. So h1 will be minus d squared by dy square w square. W squared is a1 square by y square minus 2a1 b1 by y plus b1 square minus w dash of y. So what is w dash of y? w dash of y will be plus a1 by y square plus z. So w dash of y is a1 by y square. So this is equal to d squared minus d squared by dy square plus l into l plus 1 by y square minus kappa by y plus some 0. So we can easily determine a1, b1, c1 by comparing the coefficients of you know 1 by y squared, 1 by y and constants. So if you look at uh, 1 by y squared, you have a1 squared by y squared minus a1 by y squared. So that can be written as a1 times a1 plus 1 by y squared and this should be equal to l into l plus 1 by y squared. So that will give us a1 equal to a1 into this is minus a1 here. So this is not plus this is minus. Okay. So a1 so a1 will be equal to l plus 1. So a1 equal to l plus 1 if you put l plus 1 l plus 1 minus 1 will be l. Okay. And minus 2a1 b1 by y is equal to minus kappa by y. So that will give us b1 equal to kappa by a1, which is l plus 1. 2 is there, so 2 times l plus 1. And c1 is equal to b1 square. 
C1 is equal to B1 square, which is kappa square by 4 times L plus 1 whole square. So we got uh, A1, B1, and C1. So we can easily formulate now W of Y. So W of Y is A1 by minus A1 by Y. So minus of L plus 1 by Y plus B1. B1 is kappa by 2 times L plus 1. So just to ensure that there is an L dependent, we can write this as WL of Y. Okay, so this is the super potential for generating the Hamiltonians for the hydrogen atom power. Fine. So now that we got the super potential, we can write down the operators A and A, A dagger. A was um, W plus D by D by. So that is minus of L plus one by y plus kappa by 2 times l plus 1 plus d by d by and a dagger w minus d by d by so that will give us minus of l plus 1 by y plus kappa by 2 times l plus 1 minus d by d by ok so these two we will be using later on. So let us move them one and two. Now h1 is easy to form. h1 is a dagger a, but actually using h1 only we got the entire thing. So h1 was nothing but minus d square upon dy square. It has to give the Hamiltonian. So plus l into l plus one by y square minus kappa over y plus c c1. That c1 we already found out here. So that is kappa squared by 4 times L plus 1 whole square. So basically H1 is nothing but H1 is uh, let me write it. So H1 is Hc plus kappa squared by 4 times L plus 1 whole square. So just to put the L dependence clearly, we will write it as H1 L equal to Hc L plus kappa squared by so this is equation 3. Now we want H2. So H2 is A times A dagger and that would give us, this will uh, give us, when you work it out, you can show it for yourselves minus d squared by dy squared plus here we will get l plus 1 into l plus 2 divided by y squared minus kappa by y plus kappa squared by 4 times l plus 1 whole square. Okay, so that's because uh, you have to a a dagger will give you actually n when you do a dagger in the beginning we have mentioned this you will get plus w dash okay so instead of getting a minus uh, a1 by y square you will get a plus a1 by y square so that is why you get a l plus 1 l plus 2 rather than okay so this uh, is basically l plus 1 into l plus 2 y square so how do we relate h2 to h1 that is the question so what we can see is what is HCL? HCL is minus d squared by dy squared plus L into L plus 1 by y squared minus kappa by y. So HCL plus 1 will give you L plus 1 into L plus 2 by y squared minus kappa. So what you see here is basically HCL plus 1. Right, so H2 is Hc L plus 1 plus kappa squared by 4 times L plus 1 whole square. So we can call this as 4 if we want, but we want to express H2 in terms of H1. So this also we should have an L there because it's a function of L, right? 
that's why we are putting L on top. Now, what is uh, H1? If we see on top, H1 L was HC L plus kappa squared, but right? so if you want to write this in terms of H1, so what we have to do is we have to write first H1 L plus one. H1 L plus one will be HC L plus one plus kappa squared by four times L plus one plus one. So that will be four L plus two whole square. Okay, so let's call this phi and so now if you substitute for HCL plus 1 in terms of H1 L plus 1 minus this, so we will get H2L in terms of H1L. So H2L will be H1 L plus 1 plus kappa squared by 4 times 1 by L plus 1 whole squared minus 1 by L plus 2 whole square. This is equation 6. So, this is how H2 and H1 are related, and this is some constant actually, which is a function of L. Okay, but it's not having any operator. So, now we are ready for our uh, SOCI procedure to obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, we obtained the H1 and H2 part in Hamiltonian such so that they are related to each other. So, the first step is to obtain the ground state. Okay, so to obtain the ground state, we act upon H1 L some function phi 0 L of y. Okay, so that is uh, H1 L is A dagger A, A dagger A acting on so phi 0 L of y. So this should be equal to zero. That is, we want the energy eigenstate to be zero times actually phi zero L of y. So that means basically A acting on phi zero L is equal to zero. We can take it. So A we have already written at the beginning. A is uh, this here, this part. Okay. So minus of L plus one by y. A is minus of L plus 1 by y plus very difficult to remember the whole thing plus kappa by 2 times L plus 1 plus kappa by 2 times L plus 1 plus d by d by acting on phi 0 L of y equal to 0. So basically we have d phi 0 l by d y equal to l plus 1 by y minus kappa by 2 times l plus 1 into phi 0 l of phi. So you can write this as d phi 0 l by phi 0 l equal to this entire thing into d y and then integrate on both sides. So we get long phi zero L equal to L plus one times ln y minus kappa by two L plus one times y. So if you take exponential on both sides, you will get phi zero L of y. That will be when you take exponential a plus b, so you will get exponential a into exponential b. So exponential a will give you l plus 1, you can take it on top. So you will get y power l plus 1 into exponential minus kappa y by 2l plus 1. So this is our ground state. Now we can see that phi 0 l at y equal to 0 is 0 because here y is there and importantly we also should observe that phi 0 l of y tends to 0 very rapidly as y tends to plus or minus infinity. So actually here minus infinity won't be there because we are only having spherical polar coordinates. So r goes only from 0 to infinity so y also that is why we have taken this r r equal to 0 is basically same as y equal to 0 and the other part is plus, plus infinity. 
So you see here we get a exponential minus infinity and this also is going to infinity but y power uh, you know y goes uh, much slowly to infinity as compared to exponential minus infinity going to zero. So this falls off rapidly compared to this building up that's why overall it will be going to zero and that's why it is normalizable. Okay. So similarly homework you can show that a dagger acting on uh, you know some sin out l of y equal to 0 will not yield a normalizable function okay that doesn't come okay so that takes care of our uh, uh, first uh, ground state so now let us try to calculate what is the ground state eigenvalue okay so what we have is we have h1 acting on phi 0 l of y equal to 0 which is satisfying this particular normalizable wave function. Now H1L is nothing but HCL plus um, kappa squared by 4 times L plus 1 whole squared acting on phi 0 L of y equal to 0. Let's check that out. H1. H1 is yeah plus kappa squared by 4 times uh, here it is equation 3 h1 l is hcl plus kappa square 4 times l plus 1 whole square so now you can see that we can find out what is the corresponding eigenvalue for hcl so hcl acting on phi 0 l of y will be minus kappa squared by 4 times l plus 1 whole square acting on phi 0 l of y but we know that uh, hcl acting on uh, u l of y was equal to 1 times u l of y right it should have been 1 that means this particular energy eigenvalue here that we are getting should be equal to 1 so minus kappa square by 4 times l plus 1 whole square should be equal to 1. That is the condition which will give us the energy. So, what is kappa? Kappa was right from the beginning, we introduced kappa right at the beginning. Yeah, this is the kappa 2mz e squared by h cross squared k. 2mz e squared by h cross squared k. So, kappa squared will give us kappa squared will give us 4 m square z square e power 4 by h cross power 4 into k square. Now you see that. So now you can uh, take out 1 h cross square. So you get 2 m z square e power 4 by h cross square. Now, h cross squared k squared by 1 to m will give you e. Okay. So, that is what it is. So, minus 2 m z squared e power 4 by 4 times l plus 1 whole squared into h cross squared e equal to 1. So, equal to e. So, that is your We can call this as E0L. Once we obtain the ground state, step 2 is to uh, calculate what will we get when we have H2L. H2L is basically remember H1L plus 1 plus kappa squared times 1 by 4 times l plus 1 whole square minus 1 by 4 times l plus 2 whole square. Okay, this was our H2L. So, what will H2L acting on phi 0 L give us? Phi 0 L of y. So, you see H1 acting on phi 0 L of y is 0. So, H2L 
acting on phi zero L would give us kappa squared times one by four times L plus one whole squared minus one by four times L plus two whole squared times phi zero L of y. Now we can call this here as let us say e one L. So we have h two L, which is a a dagger acting on phi zero L equal to e one L times phi zero L of y. So what we do is we operate on both sides by a dagger. So we'll get a dagger a acting on a dagger phi zero L equal to e one L, which is a constant times a dagger acting on phi zero L of y. So a dagger a here is nothing but h one L. This a dagger acting on phi zero L will give us phi one L, the next highest state, equal to e one L times phi one L. So what we did was we used h two L to obtain a new energy eigenvalue, and we know that the same energy eigenvalue should also exist for h one L because of isospectral nature. So that would uh, give us automatically the First excited state. So that's why we wrote this a dagger phi zero L as first excited state. So now what is e one L? E one L is this entire thing. Okay, and h one L we already know is nothing but h c L plus kappa squared by four times L plus one whole squared. So this is acting on phi one L of y. This is equal to e one l. E one l is kappa squared times one by four times l plus one whole squared minus one by four times l plus two whole squared into phi one phi one l of y. Okay. So what we see is. This will get cancelled, so we'll be left with H C L acting on phi one L of y would give us minus kappa squared upon four times L plus two whole squared into phi one L of y. So we got the second first excited state energy eigenvalue. So basically, because we know HCl acting on phi one L of y should be equal to one times phi one L of y. So minus kappa squared by four times L plus two whole squared should be equal to one. Two m z squared e power four by h cross squared e. So if we substitute that here, minus two m Z squared e power four by h cross squared four is also there times l plus one plus one whole squared equal to e one l because it's still a function of l. So there also e zero l. That means we got all the ground states for different values of l. Okay. So what you will see is you can repeat the same process again, and finally we can get e nu l to be equal to minus two m z squared e power four by four h cross squared times l plus mu plus one whole squared. So we can write the n. That we get in energy eigenvalues as one by n squared, right? Actually, one by two n squared. The rest is a constant. So this two goes as two. So n is basically l plus mu plus 